Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. The only way to describe a match where I'm introducing this player in the top left in the red. Am I not so humble opinion the greatest StarCraft 2 player of all time? It's the finisher. It's Cyril. The rank one player in the world. It's not particularly close. But on the other side of the map, one of the few players who has even taken a map off him this year, especially of Brotoss. We'll see if he can have a repeat performance. It's the mysterious Max Pex, the Twilight Toss, and this best of five BVZ. He will have the opportunity for a repeat performance. And uh, we'll see if he captures it. But I'll capture my opportunity to beg you to like and subscribe. Jimmy, what, what are we at? All right. 1,000... 137 likes. If we get 1,137 likes on this video, I'll cast another series. And uh, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. Best of five. Protoss versus Erdmasters Coliseum. We'll see if Max Pax has what it takes. Honestly, I I'm really hoping. Max Pax has been showing like... Uh, I it feels like he, he's morphed away from a YOLO toss. Uh, the two different flavors of Pro Toss. Now, occasionally, with the very best they mix. But it, it is quite a rare experience. Uh, but you have the YOLO toss. Players like Zest, MC Party, who just know when to kill their opponent and aren't afraid to go all in aren't afraid. Uh, they just seem to have an instinct for it, which is not necessarily a, a bad way to play, but it's incredibly high risk, high reward. I'd probably put hero somewhat in that category. But there's also the shield toss. Uh, like stats. Like classic. Like need historically. Showtime. And I think Max Pax is showing a lot more of a tendency towards that. A lot more of a sit back and play for the late game hey, get more bases get better economy then he's been gambling on those adept timings or the build which he first was known for the max pags build against Terran, where he, he in it, it it's gonna sound silly now but at the time saying i'll just build a gateway on their side of the map instead of bothering with one at home and then just recalling your first units if you needed them uh, ingenious and kind of shook up the meta even to the point where parting took the build to GSL uh, and uh, and won his match with it. so but he's come a long way since being a literal one trick pony he's now a several trick pony all right who knows how many tricks this pony has up its uh, brain so with that said maybe we're in for a revelation or possibly the Oracle We'll just mosey on out after scouting. The three bases out of Cyril. It is opening up on Grasvin. Uh, we've successfully filled five minutes of time and watched two Zerglings and a drone go down. But now, the uh, potatoes are being baked, as they say. Not in this context. Um, almost ever, but you know what? I'm bringing it back here. I'm streets ahead of the metaphor game. Two more drones. Anything out of the ordinary. Now, what is the ordinary? Uh, I've seen a few comments. I see your comments. I read them. Uh, I try to. I appreciate them. Jimmy might delete them beforehand. If you, if you think I didn't read your comments, because Jimmy didn't show me it. I'm not doing his job. But that's not my fault. Okay. But to actually explain what I mean when I say the usual, the meta. And we see a lot of similar games. But from Max Packs, that means three oracles and third base into a twilight council and a ground army and kind of putting on ground pressure until he feels like he either can't get damage done anymore or even even worse needs to deal with something like lurkers or carriers now for Cyril as zerg now as the standard yeah, good stasis there that means plus one into plus two melee attack allowing you get, to get access to the heavily contested plus two banelings which can one-shot probes and are just generally great for dealing with the army. On top of 
the upgrades for Zerglings. And then, if you need to, filling in Roach Ravager to deal with the ground army. In this case, Max Pax is varied from that standard a bit and going charge into Storm. As opposed to Twilight into uh, a more robo-heavy or Stargate heavy or Blink into a more robo-heavy composition. So he's going to be a lot more focused on the Archons and the Templar and just this kind of brute force sort of army as opposed to the more finesse-oriented Blink Stalkers. And, uh, well, Cyril is perfectly content to sit back and it looks like he's going towards the Lurker Lake game. He's got a Hydra Den on the way. Infestation Pit is done. Baneling Nest. This is about as macro as it gets. I keep, I keep wondering if we're going to kind of swerve into high-powered action sequence, but it appears 200 supply is probably going to be when that happens. Oracle got picked up. That was actually the first unit lost here for uh, uh, Mag Space. And there's the Lurker Den on the way with the Hive. They take about the same amount of time. I think it's actually exactly the same amount for that Lurker range upgrade and then adaptive talents for Lurker speed as well. We've got Baneling speed on the way, Roach speed as well. Creep itself is a speed bonus. So just getting up in your opponent's grill and making them incredibly and overwhelmingly uncomfortable is is what Zerg is all about. All right, social distancing is, well, something they do not approve of, especially when Banelings are involved. Maybe Lurkers, maybe Lurkers, but even Nidus Worms getting into your base. Um, Cyril's been throwing a lot of Overlord drops in lately as well. The next thing we're going to have to look for is we're, we're just essentially um, blowing past the mid game here with a wink and a nod as <laughs> I swear guys usually usually say this isn't a fastest map. This is well this is game one on Gresvin. The the longest distance between the two bases. There's a relative no man's land in the middle of the map as well that the players have to navigate. Uh, so it is it comes down to being the turtle east of maps. And that's it that's a real word. Alright? The most turtleful. You could just say defensive. No. It's a different vibe. Okay, there's defensive and then there's turtle. And, well, this is where the fun begins. Magspags warping in around a charge lot to the main. Roaches and queens are there to intercept, but the Archons are bashing their way in towards the fort. The Spinecrawler wall helping deal with it. Storms on the drones, finding a whole lot of damage. Kills a dozen drones. Cyril plummets to 83, so not, not hurting too bad from that. And going to replace them immediately. The first kind of Archon walk by there. Ends up doing quite well. But overall, Max Pax, there you go. He tested the waters. He sent out the expeditionary force. It's like, maybe I could get some damage done. This is a very strong army. I got Psionic Storm. I got a bunch of Archons. And nope, those are Lurkers. Fleet Beacon on the way. Two Stargates as we sprint. Chrono Boost and build our way to Sky Toss. Cyril. He is building up the Lurker count dramatically. He's got nine of them so far. Adrenal Glands on the way. He's already started a Spire. It feels like they're almost in the next step of the build before even acknowledging the current one. As we've seen the transition from the early to the mid game at the two, three bases and the, the Stalker gateway units and, and Road Travager. And now skirmishing with the Lurker. I don't think either player is expecting it to end here. Tempest. Now that, rushing out to, ooh. Those were zealots in there, okay. Uh, Templar, storm drops not uh, particularly worth the risk most of the time, especially at this stage. Kill 20 drones, so I'll just replace them. The lurkers are closing in. The tempests are on the way. Tempests are guaranteed damage and uh, a guaranteed price. You don't have to keep paying nickel and diamond for those interceptors. Uh, like you would with carriers. But of course, Tempests are quite vulnerable to Corruptors. And even Hydralis, a mothership, is on the way. Oh, 
the mothership with its cloaking field as well, sometimes used to help box out. Now, not so jokingly referred to as minus 400, minus 400 is the most expensive unit in the game. And sometimes the most vulnerable. But that doesn't make it useless. Just a whole lot of work to make worth it. Well, again, still relatively minimal losses. Cyril knocked out one of the outlying bases. Mags Pags has kept him busy with some charge lock counters. But neither play even a changeling involved here. Those are adrenalines. They could just crush through that nexus. The Archons will close in. He might be able to just... Oh my god. And not even plus three. Is he gonna... No. The Archons chew through it, but... The damage on those Zerglings. Cyril, back to the south. A Nidus Worm. As well being added in. I think that's more of a tactical Nidus for retreat here. As opposed to something... Oh, he can send in half a dozen more lurkers if he wants. There's no detection here to deal with it. A few roaches trying to finish off what the Zergling started, and Cyril doesn't even want these roaches anymore. He's trying to trade them out of his supply. Build some a little more meaningful. So Cyril gets another Nexus. Max packs on five, which is, you know, perfectly fine for now. Infestors on the way. Neural Parasite. He's got Pathogen Gland, so he pops out with 75 energy. Enough for a fungal. Tectonic Destabilizers. Probably the quickest I've ever seen that upgrade. An upgrade that's usually an afterthought when you're looking through and, oh yeah, I forgot this one. But adding a huge amount of damage to the Tempest, I believe plus 30 or 40, uh, making it take way less hits to kill buildings, specifically against building. Neural Parasite isn't quite done yet. An Ultraless Cavern is on the way. Throws out a fungal, though. The Lurkers are trying to close in. Ain't gonna happen. Storms ward them back. The Corruptors, though. Another fungal chained together. Storms are melting through the Corruptors. And Max Pax wards away. The attempt to chase him down. So far, so good. In that fight, Max Pax actually taken a more cost-effective trade. Not by a huge amount, and not a massive engagement. But showing he's not to be trifled with. Not so easily. No needs to make sure he has that detection alongside it. Max Pax always very heavy on the probe count in the late game. 91 probes. I've seen 100 from him, but that's far too much. Are those circling? That's a plus two shields cannon, the only upgrade that affects them. God damn. The Zergling's just ripping them apart. Now, of course, six cannons are a little better at, uh, at dealing with six Zerglings. The just vanguard here of lurkers, vines, infestors, and corrupt. Honestly, the different dark is like watching a impressionist painting. Okay. You don't know, like, it's not super detailed, but you know all the pieces are there, and it paints a beautiful picture. Cyril is like a technical drawing. He's got this perfect concave of lurkers with spores. He's got, like, conveyor belts he can move between. I've been playing too much Factorio, all right? Like, I gotta respect Cyril, though. Uh, clearly a similar mindset there required, even with Zerg, who is mostly are arguably the most chaotic when it comes to their building setups and the way they put the, all the units together. But Cyril makes it... He boils it down and distills it to it. Like, what is this? He's got another just palisade here of spores and spines. They're, the, the point of static defense... Well, not so static defense when it comes to spores and spines, but static enough is to slow down Install out so units can get into position. Unlike your average Bronze League hero, it isn't a means to an end in and of itself. It's a way to make sure you can get them. Having 50 spore crawlers isn't going to win you the game, but it's going to make the Tempest and the Mothership take long enough to get into position that you can ideally rotate your units to defend. That is, until Max Pack just bashes through the north side and a fungal on everything. The Tempest raining down fire, but the Broodlings 
All right, look come out. The Brutal Lord's throwing him down. Recalls the mothership. Corruptors will try to close in. Not going to get it. Oracle. Caught and killed. Lurkers backing off as Max Pax recalled to try to defend that central base. So far, Cyril's actually lost 3,000 more minerals. They've mined a very similar number here. Cyril with a couple thousand more. The cloaking field actually saves, well, keeps the Nexus cloaked for now. Detection at a premium on both sides. He's finally gonna get that lurker. That lurker bought a lot of time. Charge lots. Slice up a few drones before getting sliced up themselves. There's always a bigger knife. Plus three air weapons. Well, plus three across the board here. We got ultra speed as well. Sarah may be going to have some counterattack forces. Ultra is pretty good for absorbing storms and closing the distance on the Templar, which is likely what they'll be used for here. Storm is the only thing between this Tempest-based Sky Toss army and getting wiped away. The Archons aren't enough. A storm and the potential damage is what is really keeping Cyril at bay here. A fungal catches some of it. Actually does a lot of damage to the observer there. Uh, the Nidus into the main. But the Tempest should have enough damage to deal with it if it pays attention. Uh, hello? Hello? Max Pax? Oracle? He warps it? No, it's too late. You got it. Well, I don't think Cyril expected this to work. Alright, why would it? Ooh, Nexus taken out. I think canceled at this point. 9,000 minerals in the bank. Over 9,000. I, I would be too worried. Shield battery overcharged to pat that pylon on the back. Goes for the assimilators. It's like a... It, watching Sarah's like watching a flowchart play StarCraft. Those Zerglings, he's like, alright. Pylon? No. Assimilators? Yes. Split damage away from cannons. Move on. Go to the Serral action cam here. Forces under attack. Forces He's uh melting. Oh, all right, those weren't changelings. Setting out some counters. Did he? I think he burrowed. Oh, he just injected his hatcheries. If you weren't paying attention. Um, even if you are, it's hard to uh, hard to catch. Sets up a Nidus to the north side. He knows the army is moving up as well. He's got. So much map vision there. Uh, and retreats into the Nidus. Keeps a one lurker burrowed right outside. Of the te oh my god, he's targeting down the Templar with the single no HP lurker. Uh, meanwhile, tries to grab that oracle. Nothing quite get it. Changelings. Storm to kill changelings. Cyril, just constricting Max Pax here. Not that Max Pax is in a particularly tough position. Let's go to his side of the story. Now, I think it's the map vision that really stands out. Between the creep, the changelings, and everything else, overlords, in their existence, Cyril is... Uh, sees most of the map, whereas Max Pax a lot of the time is stuck in the dark. Another army to the north. Mothership still gliding by. Setting up more bases. Dark Shrine. At the, this is the point we start filling in all the tech we haven't gotten yet. A knight us into the main. Back to everyone. At the, it, it's awkward because Max Pax is maxed out. Which means he can't just pack up some of his units and send them into the main. He can't warp in. And that means these lurkers are actually surprisingly dangerous. The Queens, a foothold. A many foothold, considering the nature of these units. And that will force even more units back. 
through the Zerg warp gate here. The night is... Oh yeah, he's able to reposition. This dragged a lot of the Tempest back, so might be able to make some progress. It appears uh, he, he isn't particularly keen on uh, actually attacking and, and trying to, to grab an extra base, it seems. It seems Cyril is content to half-map it. And it is an exact half-map scenario, which is kind of surprising and somewhat refreshing, as it's been a while since we've seen it with someone so even between the players. Usually one side has an advantage and is able to press it to one or two more bases. Well, Cyril's actually making some progress on the north, so I may have spoken too soon here. Wow, so few resources lost. This fight the length of the game. The armies are massive. 6k minerals actually worth more gas, Max Paxis. Well, maybe not for long. There's a beautiful set of fungals. Time warp gonna slow things down, but not quite enough. The mothership itself will survive, but almost nothing else. The Archons can't quite maneuver here. The amount of cannons is too damn high, and the waves of broodlings are just raining down. Wiped out was the mothership alongside all the Tempests. Enough underneath. And with the Broodlords on the back, Cyril just cleans the field and the skies simultaneously. And he's done a good job of holding back at home. I'm not sure what exactly went wrong. I, I, it'd probably be easier to track what exactly went right there for Max Pax. As he just stepped, glided, glid? That's not a word. Glided a little too far. And Zero punished him immediately over the invisible line. All right, so said, okay, now. Just landed all the fungals. Corruptor's in a perfect position. Broodlord zoned out all the Archons. And Magspex, of course, has the resources to rebuild. But Zero comes out, wow. 7,800 to 2,800 resources killed. Or uh, minerals, 3,000 to 900 gas. Just a perfect fight. And now adding Vipers. For the first time. The fact he didn't have Vipers before is kind of crazy. I think the Vipers are for actually starting to dismantle the army. In that case, he let him walk into his jaws. And he, he uh, bit him off all. But now the Vipers are going to be needed. In order to start to pick it apart. It is very interesting. Still no carriers. I take it back. One carrier. Was it on purpose? Oh, Fungal looking for an opportunity. Beautiful storms. Almost there. He's got a lot of the investors there, but the angle isn't great. Really for either side. Neither player really confident, but Cyril? Eh, I think Cyril's still getting the better end of it here. Templar survives for now. The may have been a misclick of a carrier as he's building mass void ray going for more tries to snipe it off oh snaps it up the void rays are much better against the corruptors and they can fill in against the brood lords but they are uh a difficult to use against these Zerg spellcasters. They have a tendency, much in the same, for the same reason they're so good in the Gold League, is the reason they're not such a great part of the late game Golden Armada. Is when you just A move them, they stack up and concentrate their fire beautifully. But when against Serral, you stack up, he's just gonna hold you in place and knock you down. Their vulnerability to the Wombo Combo Parasitic Bomb Fungal is uh, their main weakness. If he can get the Infester, if he can dismantle either part of the Spellcaster composition, then the Void Rays can definitely work. They got the Flux Veins done. He's not charging him up. He's holding on to it, trying to kind of pre-split there. Only gets two of them caught. Actually leading the charge with a couple Void Rays. In order to minimize the potential damage, the Ultras chewing through more back at home.
Lurker Ultralisk. Quite ah. uh, the Brood or S composition. The carrier has arrived, though. I don't know how much detection is to drive it back. How many spores on the map? 35 spores. Spread throughout. <sighs> Cyril has a way of making 200 supply look like nothing. <laughs> For his opponent, of course. The army supplies are nearly even. The army values are a, a bit in favor of Cyril. Very, very spellcaster heavy. Also, kind of a side note, Void Rays are one of the few units, I think, that can actually catch and kill Ultras. Uh, an interesting choice with this. He's got a dozen Voids here. He's got to go for the hatch. You got to get out of there before the Infestors can scamper by. And trying to catch him out on the field, the Spores are on the run. Well, as fast as they can. <laughs> no baby legs. Though. You know what? Not so static. Cyril accidentally breaking the supply count. Forced to cancel his hatch, so 201. We'll see if he goes further. Oh yeah, I think he is. I think it's time for Cyril to break the game. Unless he just wants more spores, which might be it as well. Cyril, do the thing. The spore cancel. Okay, well, I guess having 50 spore crawlers also works. 23 cannons on the map. How many cannons have been lost? 28. This cannon and spore per minute reaching well over one. Don't these players can afford plenty more, though. Don't you worry. And the only... Well, the major concerning part here is the gas. Max packs is uh, down 5,000 in the gas bank. Cyril can rebuild his army. It is incredibly expensive. 8,100 gas on Max packs, maybe half. Lights up. Oh! Yanks in a couple void rays. Doesn't bother with parasitic bomb. Goes for the guaranteed kills. Full upgrade. Wait. Wait, only plus one armor for max packs in the air? That's actually not a small mistake. It's not a large mistake. It's a moderate size mistake. It's a fun size mistake. Well, if you're Cyril, I guess, but uh, definitely not. Like, against this army, armor upgrades are not a huge deal, as Fungal doesn't care too much. The Corruptors hit really hard either way. But, once again, not nothing. I think he just realized it. Starts plus two air armor. Recalls to the north. At some point, you know, I miss the mothership dying. I have no idea how long it's been dead, but Max Pax clearly was not impressed with it uh, and decided not to rebuild it. So, he's actually now adding a robo bay. Late game, this, is he going to try disruptors? Ooh, snipes off. Great feedbacks. Pops a few infestors. Hits a couple vipers. 48 spore crawlers on the field. Right, very simply here. The void rays can't afford to really pick a fight. Unless the infestors and vipers are mostly negated. Despite how strong they are in a straight-up fight, Cyril's just not going to give him one. That's the issue right now. Now, Archon's working their way through. Got to be careful with those observers. As even now, I think there's still a few lurkers. There's two lurkers. Sailed down to 39 drones. Yeah, not charging up the void rays. Doesn't want to slow them down just when they're starting to do damage. They have kind of a soft lock on. They can continue attacking in the direction they're currently facing as long as their target is moving almost directly away. Uh, otherwise, they have to break the lock and kind of retarget it. They're very uh, forward thinking. Maxpex is slowly kind of fortifying this northern position. 
How many brood lords is there left? Five of them. Which is quite impressive considering he's been facing against the hard counter to brood lords, Tempest, for like over 15 minutes. He's just never. They've been so effective, too. They've made so much progress. He always seems to, to manage to keep them safe. It, it feels... Well, it's felt like for a while it's been trending towards Serral. This is one of those games where I think it comes down to whether he makes a mistake. Like, uh, Max Pax can try to force the issue, but if Serral is able to focus all his attention, his army is just going to win. But if at any point he loses a key component, his infestors, he loses too many corruptors, or even just the Broodlords, which there aren't that many. He loses many of the Broodlords. He doesn't have that much on the ground. Well, he's going to borrow some of his own. He uses Microbial Shroud in order to do... Oh my, well. He activates the... Oh my, well at this point. Stop hitting yourself. Wow, the alley oop there. Cyril, Microbial Shroud on the Infestors to reduce the damage from the air. He Neural Parasites an Archon, and then uses his Broodlords to kill what is at that moment his Archon, and the Broodlings zone out the rest of the ground army. Which is like next level stop hitting yourself. There are 56 Spore Crawlers. Maxpax actually managed to finish that Nexus. Cyril? has expanded to the south here in the 6 o'clock. <laughs> Two more rubbers. He's going for the Desperation Ruptors. And, uh... The Desperuptors. That sounds very saucy. And accurate. The Desperuptors. Praying that they don't get used to kill all the Templar, but instead actually manage to hit... I don't know, kill some spores? Feedbacks. Did he get all the vipers? No, there's a couple full energy vipers still. It is quite hard to pick them out of the crowd. That's part of the reason why you'll sometimes see a bunch of overseers. One, for detection. And two, because they can kind of mask the energy bars of the vipers. Yeah. Covering their great target fire. Down to three. There's one last viper. Yanks in some tempests. He actually got... Uh, he got the nexus there. Trying to get more, but the Infestor's on the high ground. He catches them. The Vipers don't have enough energy for Parasitic Bomb. Very, very lucky for Max Pax here. Uh, he had to retreat him. And now the continued exchanges, but the Ultras and the Zerglings are chewing through the exposed production here. As Max Pax had so much of his army focused on the main attack. The Ultras are slowly chipping away at the base, kind of putting a timer on anything else that Max Pax wants to do. He can potentially... Wait, does he not have Baneling Speed? All right, that's odd. Uh, I guess he hasn't really made any Baneling Speed. <laughs> Cyril is just... He's even maintaining so many of his Spore Crawlers. The gas is almost gone for Max Pax. Great storms here. But another Archon down. The Tempest struggling to actually turn and shoot. He's building three carriers. Well, I guess he has minerals. He just doesn't have much gas. And carriers end up costing a lot more minerals than gas, usually. <laughs> this feels like... It, it doesn't even feel like Cyril is, is particularly killing Max Pax. It's just that Max Pax is slowly drowning, and Cyril is just not helping him. Of course, Cyril is pushing him down with one of his hands, but kind of like casually. He's watching two Archons fight each other, trigger some more Broodlings. I don't, so at the very least, I don't think we'll see another game like this in this series.
if I'm Max Pex, unless something changes very, very soon. He has 1,000 gas left. If I'm... Oh my god, he makes a mothership. The final gambit. As we're at 175 army supply. It's still an army that if Cyril makes any... If he makes a mistake, he doesn't have that much gas in the bank. He can't afford to lose what he already has here. It's just he's not making a mistake. Protoss is absolutely incredible. Ask any nerd on the ladder at exploiting weaknesses in your defense, at any sort of miss micro, at any misposition. But I have this on good authority. The vast majority of StarCraft II players are not Serral. The Brood Lord's raining down. Fungal catches everything in the air. Infestors turn them against each other. Ultras underneath are chewing up the Templar. But the Void Rays are charged up. The Fungal don't quite do it. He just gives it... Was it really? I... It looked like he was making some progress there. I mean, we're gonna break it down. Bye bye. Here comes Cyril. Uh, he grabs all of this. He's got the money in the bank. You gotta remember. He's just yanking it in. There's so many spores. A couple. Uh... God, those control groups. He's got one ground, corruptors, hatcheries, infestors. Yeah. No, the par there were two parasitic bombs there. Ah, he hit the wombo combo at the end. And Max Pax, as soon as he saw the para bombs. I wish I could say a close and back and forth game, but that, Cyril, is inevitable. Dark's impressionist painting, Cyril's... It, it, it certainly needs to stop smurfing in professional tournaments, all right? When are we going to stop him? He needs to switch the hands. You know what I found di more difficult than mouse only? Playing StarCraft? The actual most difficult challenge is to switch the hands of the mouse and keyboard. So you get the double trouble there. Uh, mouse only? Fine. Easy enough. You know where all the hotkeys are. But switch those. You know what? Let's do that for somehow he's still going to be competitive. My opponent should get one of those lifelines per match. Alright. <sighs> but of course, that was Cyril in the technical drag down knockout late late game. Drag down knockout is I think the most accurate description as well. As literally the Vipers dragging out units. And the Corruptor's knocking them down. Ah, that's, tough. that's a tough act to follow. Alright, game two. What are we gonna see, Max Pax? I think it's on you. Those games make me, I'll be, I, I'm gonna break the fourth wall a bit. Those games kind of make me upset. Not necessarily at like the balance or at the map or anything, but at how good Cyril is. Like I look at that, I'm like, no, it's never gonna happen. I'm over here. Whenever I get infestors and vipers, it's like, um, it's not like trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. It's like trying to walk, chew gum, ride a unicycle and juggle. A bunch of flaming swords. Does it matter if the swords are flaming? What kind of swords? It, it... <laughs> All right, I can't even whistle. So all that's going to be... I don't know why that would be related, but I thought I should throw that in just as a great demonstration of my basic incompetences uh, in the face of, you know, Cyril playing StarCraft.
Stargate is on the way. Which, uh, it'd be even more concerning, I think, if it wasn't. Max Pack sticking to it. And Grespin is the macro map. It's out of the way. And so many of these pro players. Another impressive part is how little they get tilted. I think Rainer is probably the best example of someone who can go down 2-0 and just say, you know what? Never mind. Dark, of course, but for Dark, it looks like it was his plan. Uh, whereas Rainer clearly had, had struggles, loses games, and bounces back. But Max Pax as well. Um, maybe not quite to the same extent. Maybe because we, we don't know from that emotional level. Right, so Rainer is very much... Well, he's Italian, so... <laughs> Art on his sleeve and everywhere else. Uh, when things are going well, they're going amazing. When they're going bad, they're going horrible. But a game like that would, would make me consider, no matter which side, both sides, I'd be like, all right, that's enough ladder for today. Let's go commentate some of these nerds. But uh, that's part of being a pro. All right, you gotta, you gotta take those and move on. And also one of the hardest parts is scheduling StarCraft tournaments because for every 40 minute game, you could have two four minute games. This one, I have it on good authority, will go longer than four minutes. But how much longer? Hey. Well, like and subscribe when you're down there. I don't... Usually best of fives are scheduled for like an hour. That usually evens out well enough. But... We do it live. Well, give or take. Forge with no twilight? Hmm. Hmm, there's the twilight, all right. Is this intentional? I mean, I think so. Just really wants to, like, a plus two Blink Stalker timing or something? Like, straight out of Heart of the Swarm? And whereas Cyril's gonna go back to that... <laughs> Once again, the technical drawing. He's got that Roach Warren on the way just in case. He's adding on the lair, right around the five minute mark, 50 drones. Plus one melee attack uh, as well. The first upgrade from the Twilight will be Telly, as it often is. He is setting up once again. Honestly, he may have done this last game as well. Serral doesn't even, like, it, the Zergling dies before the stasis even triggers. That's necessarily a preferable response, but... Charge it is. Chrono boosting immediately. Two gases at the third base here is Max Pax. Looks like he's gonna go down the Templar route again. We'll see if he presses the issue further. He's gonna try for the Archon. Well, does he go for the Storm? Or a more mass Archon sort of strategy? Templar Archon is about to complete Baneling Nest for Serral. He's got his fifth hatchery on the way. Wouldn't be surprised to see a macro hatch momentarily. Storm it is. Max packs. So this is the danger of being a shield toss, though. For all its strengths, its main weakness is predictability. That kind of, uh... That you, you don't really have the... I'll hit you at any time kind of crazy look in your eye. If you get too predictable. This is what, uh, for a while, Neeb suffered with. Uh, before he started winning, well, before his breakout year, where he really started exploring uh, adept timings. But, um, if you, Zergs are the adaptable race. If you know what's coming, it's very likely you're going to be able to prepare for it. Now, the uh, the lore doesn't apply as much in, in the multiplayer aspect as it might sound, especially not in Legacy of the Void, with the way the economies are. Pretty much everyone can get up to 60, 70 workers. In this case, 90, without worrying too much about it. But the unit compositions and what you're focused on 
uh, at different stages of the game. It's definitely something that it becomes a lot easier as Zerg if you know what you're dealing with. Like, do I want to focus more on the Banelings? Or am I investing in Ravagers? Well, we're going straight up towards the Lurkers. Uh, all these are quite costly investments. But if you're able to make them even 30 seconds quicker, that can sometimes make or break the game. And again, a relatively passive two Adepts, 17 Zerglings. A couple Overlords have died. But overall, just sitting back towards 200 supply. Max Packs counting on this as his best opportunity. Oh, Brenda and the whole gang are here to drive back that prism. Hmm, strong gust of wind. We'll take that one to the Moopies down there. They're thirsty for blood. Don't let their cute looks fool you. Is that a Goliath? Oh my. Well, moving on. That's a lot of Banelings. Plus two melee attack is on the way. Banelings speed is done. Will Cyril wait? Or does he smell blood? Overlord speed. I, I mean, Overlord creeping here. In order to get creep on Max Pax's front door even quicker than spreading from his base. Plus two melee. 15 seconds out. Max Pax is trying to box Cyril out here. Cyril is jockeying for position. He's, he's trying to hit right as plus two melee completes. Four seconds, three seconds. He's got adrenal glands on the way. He's trying to chase down. Has to deal with this zealot counterattack, but the spotting crawlers in the wall off there. The details. There's a couple very peace uh, stasis wards. Thankfully, we'll save the banelings from the storms. The Archons, actually, the beautiful concave. Shield battery overcharge helping a lot. The Archons are holding the line, but Cero is slowly but surely pushing it back. More storms. He's filing through the stasis warded banelings, actually creating something of a wall. And a great defense, but unfortunate select all army hotkey as he kills the war prism. And that opportunity for any sort of counterattack just got knocked out with it. <sighs> well, Mainlings tried to roll in. Max Pack's holding well so far. Cyril going with a much more unit heavy composition. Not trying to turtle the lurkers, but he does have a greater spire on the way. And the Mainlings! Ah, oh, the Zealots. It's such an awkward fight. As the Zealots are almost magnetized onto the Mainlings with that charge upgrade. Desperately throwing themselves. Uh, we meet a glorious. Oh my god! All right, and the Templar just warped in and now warp it out. One gets a merge off, tries to get through, but Cyril just busted through the face. There's so 21 probes, all gone. Storms, Nexus, forget about it. Cyril just runs it down, and there's no counter damage. There's nothing back at home. There's nothing slowing down the next attack or the one after that. If, if Max Pax couldn't handle that one, I don't know what he does to deal with the next. He has a moment of reprieve. Just a moment. As long as a moment is approximately 26 Banelings build time. I mean, they're all building at the same time, but however long it takes, what is it, 15 seconds? I should really know that number, but too quick. All right. Another wave. Loaded up max packs. Is it 108 army supply? But where is it? Charging into battle. The Banelings rolling through. Filing in. The Zealots are zoned out, as is most of the rest of the army. The Roaches and Ravagers. The Banelings. Just the meat shield here. The Biomass. The Blink Stalkers retreating. But that means Sarah will just take out this Nexus with the Banelings for cover. This is a game he's not looking to fight the long-term war of attrition. He'll lose twice as many resources in order to win the day. And right now, honestly, he's still being pretty cost-effective. Almost even with Max Packs, despite all of these Bane Links. Well, that's two ranged attack. Are there any Vipers? More Bane Links rolling in. Max Packs struggling to keep the probe count up at this stage. Down to 49. Max Packs has about the best army he's ever going to get. 99 to 95 army supply. 
in favor of the Protoss, though the production tab just changed that. Attack to the north. Stasis zones out a few of the Zerglings. Here come the Banelings again. Another Zergling attack. Just pulling things back, and all Cyril has to do is buy a little bit of time. And that's a lot of bit of space. Max Packs cannot find his footing here. And he tried to battle it out. He was maxed out, but Cyril sending him the Pax's bags. He might be able to protect this base, but 17 more probes down. Either Max Pax wins the fight and loses his economy, or uh, saves his economy and loses a fight. There is, it seems, no winning here for him. Cyril is not offering any alternatives. There's a reason Cyril has over a 90% win rate against Protoss this year. And it's not because those Protoss are particularly charitable. <laughs> Just devastating. It's not over yet. I feel my uh, team is obligated to tell me. But... <laughs> uh, usually you have to go to other sites to watch Domination like this. Well, game three. Mags Packs offering slightly more than a speed bump in the previous game. Game one was truly a slowdown, more like a checkpoint. And if it keeps trending in this direction, this game will be about three minutes long. But we will see. Oh, Jimmy, no. Not Max. He's a Protoss. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2-0 for Cyril. Is it time for the obligatory adept? The obligatory adept all in? We will see. I don't know. We've seen the drawn out late game. We've seen the all out mid game. All that's left is the scrappy early game. If we want to test the waters on that. He's researching Warp Gate, which usually doesn't seem like a huge deal, but is oftentimes an indicator that he does want to go for something... Um, not a Stargate. At least at one point it was an indicator of not a Stargate, because... In order to uh, build a Stargate, you delay Warp Gate. But in this case, he's building a Zealot afterwards. I think intentionally, I was building a Zealot. And then he canceled it and built a Stalker. Because right now, Cyril, and you best believe he's doing this, is watching. He doesn't have the little icons, of course. But he can see the animation of them building. And it would be very suspicious if Max Pax was not building out of his gateway. So Magspex is giving the Overlord the information it's supposed to get. And right now, Magspex is doing a lot of little moves to make it look like he's not going Stargate. He's doing everything um, to make it look just like that. I wonder if Cyril realizes that Stalker was late and therefore it's a Stargate. I wouldn't put it past him, but I think he's masked it pretty well. That doesn't mean Cyril won't build a Spore Crawler. Uh, or have queens in position, but it lessens the likelihood slightly. And I think that's what he's banking on.
Roach weren't on the way. It worked. Uh, but then the aura, he just uses the oracle to spot the overlord. And I say it worked because Sarah was building a roach one. Max Pax, you had it. You did it. You bamboozled Sarah. And then he just uses the oracle for high ground vision. And gives it away. There's spore crawlers in production. Now he's going to have queens in the right spot. All right, maybe he just wanted to kill the Ovi. I don't know. But Cyril actually built a Roach Horn at the uh, Adept slash DT defense timing. And then the moment he spotted the Oracle, immediately canceled it. He'll probably rebuild it a little later. But that's how planned out. That's why I say it's like watching a flowchart. Because it's so clear, the decision making here. And I will say, like, credit to Max Pax. He led him down that road. Unfortunately, Max Pax wasn't walking it very far himself. All right, the two oracles in. The spore crawler is here. A lot of damage on one of those oracles. Twilight Forge on the way. Yeah, there's the roach one. More standard timing right alongside that layer. And the adepts into the natural. Maybe trying to drag some attention. Nope, there's still some queens in the main. Looks like he tried something in the natural as well. Four adepts down. Doesn't seem like enough damage. It is going to be blink this time instead of charge. Much more focused on hitting that early mid game timing. He's adding four more gates. So Max Pax will be going for heavier blink stalker aggression. Does he have a robo? No. And Cyril not even gonna bother. Not gonna risk the Zerglings. Wants to keep them intact. I wonder if he, uh... Oh. At this point, does he know? Because against Bling Stalkers, well, Roachling is just fine. Hydraling is actually incredibly good if you can get it, but... Uh, Roachling is a much more reliable composition, especially later on. Blink halfway there. Plus one as well. Trying to get more and more kills. Cyril's only at 61 drones, so Max Pax has done a pretty good job of limiting the drone count. Killed 15 so far. And only traded adepts for it. Hmm. A lot of Zerglings in production. Cyril? Not over droning at all here. He's making sure he's tempering that drone count with plenty of zerglings. Because the biggest risk is getting your critical mass of zerglings taken out and never being able to rebuild it. Especially against an army like Blink Stalkers, which is very reliant on gaining momentum. If you have so many zerglings, they just can't fight. You get no value out of the Blink. Uh, so here we go. Plus one melee is done. Plus one Protoss ground weapons. Small counterattack. Enough stalkers and an oracle, probably most importantly there. Nice packs working on things. Here come the Zerglings. Blinks back to the bridge. Gonna use this little choke point here. You shall not pass. We'll see. I... The Zerglings are wrapping around. He's trying to preempt the blink. Oh, he blinks back, but Cyril's already there! He recalls off the bridge! Loses the oracle anyways. What a cinematic surround. And a clear dismantling of Max Pax's early aggression. Cyril, he does, does he ha- he has the roach horn, he has roach speed. He's only now building the roaches. Stalker's gonna find some of the Banes. Zerglings surround the Zealots here. And we'll rip them up. Another wave is warped in. Cyril pulls back for now. Almost a hundred Zerglings on the field. This early on. Burrow on the way as well. A little bit extra spice here. Warprism trying to come in, but there's always a Queen on watch. 
Five more joining, but it looks like the charge lots will warp in just barely in time. That will force some of the units back. As the queen's not quite cut out for this. And the zealots cut into them. The zealots on the left. Blink stalkers on the right. Max Pax with the three-pronged attack, but Sarah with the trident defense. He's got roaches over to the right flank alongside the zerglings. Unfortunately, a lot of them are in stasis now, but they'll be back. He boxed out on the left. Well, he killed the zealots, and he killed the warp prison. So Max Pax not making headway on any front and is at severe risk of losing too many units to continue even being out on the map at all. Continuing. Stalkers getting caught. One, two, three more dead. The rest blink away. Another attack. More zealots. They make a semi-wall off. War Prism microing away from Banes. The most awkward fight. The Zergling's coming back. Plus two melee is done. Max Pex is down to 122 supply. Brenda! It's back. It's back, Susan. I told you they'd be back. They always come back. We must be vigilant. All right, Brenda. Oh, my God. Why are you so intense? I'm sorry. I blacked out for a second. Uh, plus two armor on the way. So heavy upgrades here for Max Bags. But Sarah is at 200 supply. He, does he, he doesn't have an infestation pit. So where are my 58 mainlings, Sarah? Where are they? Ah, 23. He's not out of money. I, he can do more. He better do more. And these stasis wards are actually kind of preserving a lot of the lings and banes for later. Stasis ward is, um... It doesn't actually kill anything. It just makes it very stressed out about its potential future. Meanwhile, bane links slipping in. The stalker holds the door. The door is blown up in its face. But Max Pax with actually a beautiful defense on all but one front. 22 probes. It was going, and the momentum was shifting. He almost did it. And then Zero slipped through. There's going to be a weakness somewhere. The Banelings got in and the probes did not get out. 38 more Banes. Serral's smash. Thing is, if Magspax holds on for another wave or two, big if, Serral does not have a hive. So, there is a dream. But we will see. He just bashes through, blinks into defend, but the rest of the army is surrounded. Banelings everywhere. The Colossi are overrun. The Nexus is an afterthought. The Protoss are in shambles right now. The Zerg have retaken the map. And there will be no redemption, no reckoning, no turnaround, no reversal. Serral with the 3 0 absolute utter obliteration. The final Protoss in the Master's Coliseum will be unceremoniously rendered extinct. Max Pax falls. Cyril. Barely. It feels like breaks a sweat. That was almost as one-sided as a Mobius strip there. And Cyril with a comfortable 3-0. Max Pax never came up with anything that could really even uh, scratch much more than the paint. Well, if you're looking for a tutorial on how to play Zerg, um, that tutorial should teach you it was definitely a skill issue. All right. Well... I can't say I'm particularly surprised, but still an educational, I think entertaining, uh, series there. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, hopefully, if you have the means of motivation, you check out uh, Patreon. Otherwise, like, subscribe, algorithm, um, support, uh, other keywords. Jimmy, put them in there. We'll edit and post. What do you mean there's no post? Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you to World Team League and the Masters Coliseum as well. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.